All right. Thanks for the intro, Geetha. And thank you very much for inviting me. Um, so yeah, thanks, Geetha. Just quick introduction. Uh, I'm Geetha's colleague. Uh, been with our company, Artist Consulting, for about three and a half years now. Um, most of the solutions I work with involve Power Platform in some way or another, usually either Power BI, sometimes Power, uh, Power Apps, sometimes Power Automate, and Dataverse as well. So I'm going to give you a quick demo of how Dataverse interacts with data flows in both Power Apps and Power BI. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, can everyone see OK? Yeah. All right, great. Let's see fine. Thanks. All right, so Dataverse and Dataflows. Let's first talk about Dataverse, then we'll talk about Dataflows and then how they interact together. So depending on your skill level, some of this information you probably already either know or, you know, will learn that potentially in the future. Um, but using Dataverse, it's it's a great solution and one of the biggest uh, benefits of it is that it's a little to no code solution. So there's lots of other places where you can store data, but one of the really big pros for Dataverse is that it's not complicated to get to a point where you can store your data in Dataverse. Um, it's built on Azure, so you know, along with every other Azure component, it's globally available, compliant, scalable, and secure. I think their SLA is 99% uh, right now. 99% uh, available. With Dataverse, you can work with any type of data, so it could be really anything, relational, non-relational, an image, a file, you know, pretty much any kind of data. Uh, like I said, easily configurable with other Microsoft Cloud services. Uh, there's just a couple of steps you have to do, which I'll, I'll walk you through just after this. But the first thing you have to do is configure it. And then you need to populate and refresh the table, and then it's available to use for any of your solutions. So great little uh, process. All right, so let's talk about data flows a little bit now. Data flows exist both in uh, Power Platform and Power BI. They're kind of a couple different situations depending on how you want to use them. For Power Platform, more of the uh, common data service. For Power BI, more of uh, pushing data to a data lake. But the general, the general premise of a data flow is you're creating a, you've got a collection of tables and you're creating and managing the table, or managing the data. You're pushing through transformations just as you would with Power Query. You know, you're going through your normal transformations, but you're actually executing in the cloud. So rather than, you know, doing your transformations or your refresh locally, you can do this in the cloud and have it as a uh, common, uh, common source for any of your apps or reports or flows or anything like that. All right, so now let's talk about the relationship between the two of them with Power Platform. With Dataverse being a place where you can store data, uh, obviously you can use both Power Platform and Power BI data flows to pull in the data, but that can be used as a source for, pretty, like I said, any, pretty much anything. It could be a Power BI report, a dashboard, it could be a Power App, it could be you know, pretty much anything you'd want. Um, making sure I didn't lose it. OK. Um, but yeah, so it can be used as a source for pretty much anything. All right, uh, and Power App de uh, developers, like I said, can easily use Dataverse tables as sources as well. It's got its own connector, so very easy to use. Uh, it uses uh, Azure Active Directory for authentication, uh, which is standard Microsoft. And then, you know, for more information, we'll, I'll send these, a few of these links out, but we've got some, some links to the uh, Microsoft Docs and then our YouTube channel, which will help out a lot, I think, with, you know, some of the more deeper dive information that you want. Okay, so we've gone through some of the information itself. Now let's go through a quick walkthrough of how this actually works. So let me actually start from scratch. Just going to go straight to the Power Apps website. And go ahead and sign in. And this could be signing in, you know, using your uh, your personal environment or your personal uh, login, your work login, your, you know, pretty much any login you want. I'm going to go ahead and switch to my own custom environment that we set up this. 
And over here on the left hand side, you've got your typical uh, menu where you can choose from your options. You've got apps, create, dataverse flows, chat, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the big thing to point out here is the dataverse section. So if we click on the uh, expand drop down, a couple of different things we can do here. But the first step to you know populating your actual dataverse table is by clicking on the data flows tab. So we'll click on that. And I've got a completed one just to show you kind of back end how it works, but let's go through the actual process of creating one first. So we'll go ahead and click on new data flow and we'll call this Jared test data flow. And go ahead and click on create. And this screen probably looks very familiar. You know, it's it works exactly the same way as any of the other Power Platform sources when you're pulling out Power Query. Anytime you want to choose a data source, you just essentially choose exactly what source you want and then enter your credentials. For this example, I'm going to use a SQL Server database. And let me pull up my credentials. The AdventureWorks database we're going to use today. Go ahead and click on. Oops. Try that one more time. Create. Database. Okay. And username and password. I'm actually going to unshare for just for a second just to put in the credentials. Okay. So I selected next, and this is essentially the first screen that comes up, you know, very similar to all your other Power Query projects. So you'd select, you know, whatever table you want to include here. This example, I'll just include, uh, include dim date and click on transform data. And it'll bring me to my pretty standard Power Query section where I can do any kind of transformations you know, splitting columns or moving columns, that kind of thing. Uh, just for the sake of this uh, demo, I'm going to just, oops, just include one, one column just to make it a little shorter. And let's remove the duplicates. So we've got a seven row column, click on next. And for this section, this is where you're mapping the tables themselves. So a few different options here. You've got your load settings. You can load to a new table. You can load to an existing table. Uh, Dataverse comes with quite a few, you know, so, uh, pre-populated tables that they think might be useful or, you know, something similar to what you might potentially create with your solution. So you can uh, load an existing table if you want as well. But for this one, I'll just do load to new table. And we'll call it uh, Jared, June 30th, just for, just for me. And give it a description. description. You're going to choose your primary key and then any alternate keys. And then here you're going to choose what your data type is. So it automatically picks up um, what the standard one is. For this one, it's just text. But, you know, obviously if you had like numbers, you could choose um, integer or anything like that. Go ahead and click on next. And then this is the second step of the process I mentioned where you have to refresh. So I'll click on refresh manually and then publish. So pretty easy. And we'll give this just a second. It's saving and then it will start Yep, it'll start publishing and then it'll kick off the refresh. Um, I created one just to show you the second half of this. So rather than wait for this one, I'll show you the next step here, which is once this data flow is completed, we're going to go ahead over to tables. And this is going to bring us to any tables that we've created. So we've got, you know, our recommended tables, which are just our standard common data service tables. And then we've also got custom tables, which are any tables that you've created as part of your data flow. I've got one here called Jared Test Table Internet Sales. I'll click on that. And I can see the data that's actually populated in this table now. So I've got, you know, 45 columns. Um, I can, if I go up to new, I can, you know, create relationships, uh, columns, keys, you know, anything like that. So this is now a data diverse table that's populated with data that you can use for your solutions. Um, so for easy way to you know populate a table and uh, pretty much all the power platform solutions include connectors to dataverse now um, i can tell you that we've used it many times you know it's been a very effective solution to go through dataverse um, so yeah just want to uh, 
open up the floor and see if anyone's got any questions about uh, you know, using Dataverse, you know, using data flows to populate a Dataverse table. Jared, we did have a question from um, Naveen. Um, um, he he had asked if this data flow maintained real time sync between two data sources. Uh, I think you need to refresh manually. The, you can refresh automatically as well. And let me pull up the edit real quick. So refresh automatically will you know keep it up to date. I had it on refresh manually just to show you here. But if you select refresh automatically, you can actually select you know specific times you want it to refresh. Um, this is you know very similar to any of the other Power Platform options. You know if you've got a, for example, a Power BI data set, you can select specific dates and times. Um, but if you select refresh automatically, it'll um, refresh on specific times. But it's not completely in sync unless you have it refreshed. We have um, another question from Fernando. Um, yep. He's asking what will be the best practice when creating an app within a solution to move the data flow um, with the solution or to leave it out of the export import process and create it in the new environment as a template of the original. Um, I've had some problems when I included in the uh, solution moment. Um, so I, I can take that, uh, Fernando. The, yeah, I, I've, I've experienced some issues too, but it doesn't happen all the time. It really depends on the order of events that take place. Um, uh, I normally create the data flow first outside the solution and then import it into the solution. And then package that solution up and then move that from one environment to another. Um, are there any specific errors that you've seen, Fernando, that you would like to share? Maybe we can help you out that way. Thank you, Vita. Not exactly right now, but uh, okay. thank you for your answer. I have to practice again and uh, make the error happen. I don't remember quite well right now. But thank you. Yeah, um, but I, I mean, I, I hear you uh, in that um, there have been times when it, it doesn't work as expected. I mean, it's not um, not a very smooth path, but um, I've, I've had better success when um, it's just created uh, outside of the solution first and then you import it as an existing artifact into the solution and then you try to um, move it or migrate it to a different environment. Right, thank you, Vita. Yep. yep, and I, yeah, I see you were um, agreeing uh, to a similar um, experience as well. Looks like uh, as far as uh, Typing, I wasn't sure if that was a question. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's that's usually where um, each is saying that it can replace connection strings within the flows, and we'll need to manually replace it with each each deployment. I think that's that's usually where the issues stem from um, because it's it's not fully baked into the whole solution export import process um, to a state where you would expect it to be, but. But I think uh, there are some, um, it, it, if you have some set of actions that you take in the right series, then yeah, you should be able to get over it. And uh, feel free to unmute yourself um, and, you know, um, and speak if, if you'd like that, or, or you can continue to use the chat. I, did, I just mentioned in the chat that I learned the other day that a, a data flow that's inside a solution is not editable inside the solution. You have to edit it out of the solution. I don't know if you've um, seen that. Oh, uh, if it's an uh, unmanaged solution, I thought you could edit it. Um, yes, if you just create a solution, you add a data flow to it, you can't edit it anymore unless you go outside the solution to edit it. And to edit it, I mm, haven't asked. Maybe because I have always like created it outside the solution and then added it at the time of deployment. No, I think why. um I. I've, I've experienced that as well in the sense that <clears throat> once it moves into a solution, you cannot edit it within the solution, but you can go outside of it. As in, you can go into the data flow section in Power Platform mm, and, exactly. and Studio so and then edit it, right? So you can't edit it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. 